In today's video, I'll show you how to easily cut mirror for mosaics. Whether you're cutting a larger piece or something a bit smaller, get ready to add a new material to your favorites list. Let's get to it. Welcome back. And if you're new here, my name is Julie. And on this channel, we discuss tips, tricks, tools, adhesives, materials, and specific mosaic projects, all to shorten your learning curve when it comes to creating mosaic art. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please consider subscribing. Why use mirror in mosaics? We have glass, we have ceramic and porcelain and stone, and why do we need mirror? In my opinion, seeing mirror in a mosaic is the equivalent of an artistic dance party. The light reflects off of the mirror and you can't contain it. Mirror adds a bit of shine, shimmer, and glamour to any mosaic it's on. And it seems the smaller the mirror pieces, the happier the larger mosaic project looks. I've enjoyed using mirror in mosaics for many years. And in fact, the mirror I'm cutting today is for a future project. My first time working with mirror in mosaics was when a friend of mine gave me a broken antique mirror that her cat accidentally knocked over. It was thick mirror and although I was very excited to have a new material to work with, it was incredibly difficult to cut. And I'll explain more about that in a minute. But first, what exactly is mirror? It's glass coated with a metal amalgam getting all sciencey here and it reflects a clear image an amalgam would be a mix or blend of metal the backs of modern day mirrors are silver or aluminum so it's basically clear glass with a painted or foil backing and as you might be thinking it is best to try and go with a silver backed mirror as opposed to an aluminum backed mirror. The reflective quality is better with silver. Mirrors can be concave, convex, or flat. Flat being the most common. Standard household mirrors usually come in three different thicknesses, either 1 8 of an inch, 3 16 of an inch, or a quarter of an inch. The mirror my friend gave me was a quarter inch thick, which is why it was difficult for me to cut it with mosaic hand tools. When choosing mirror in mosaics, it's best to go with a thinner option. The quarter inch thick really is hard to cut. Before we begin cutting our mirror, need to make sure that we protect our eyes. These are my regular glasses just so I can see what I'm doing. If you don't wear glasses, you'll wanna pick yourself up an inexpensive pair of safety glasses these also have a clear panel on the side just to catch anything that might shoot up from the sides. But we definitely want to make sure we're working with glass. We need to protect our eyes. When cutting mirror in particular, you want to make sure that you're working on a clean surface. Because remember, the backing of the mirror is actually painted on or foil and it can be scratched off. And then you're left with clear glass. You can work on a flat work table or you can cut on a glass cutting grid like this one. To cut the mirror, I'm going to use a glass cutter. This model is called the Thomas Grip, but there's also the Pistol Grip and the Pencil Grip. You can buy glass cutters at a stained glass store or online. And often when you do buy them in a stained glass store, they will have all three models on hand for you to try and see what's best and most comfortable for you before you make your purchase. Each of the glass cutters operate basically the same way, which is there's a reservoir in the glass cutter where you fill it with glass cutting oil. And then it operates by this carbide wheel at the end. This is what does all of the work, the scoring of your glass. And so you want to make sure that you have the oil in the reservoir or you dip the carbide wheel in a little bit of oil before you start on your glass because this is self-oiling and you want to make sure that this wheel is moving. I don't fill the reservoir up all the way 
I just put a few drops in each time I see it getting low. And you can see the reservoir right here. Believe it or not, this is just a couple drops of oil, but you just drop it in, close it up, and you're ready to go. The job of the glass cutter is to score a line across the surface of the glass, breaking the tension on that surface. So you can pre-measure your glass and mark it up with a permanent marker, or if you're cutting on a grid, you can use that or you can cut random sizes and widths. It's really up to you. To cut straight lines on mirror and glass, I like to use a metal ruler that has this non-skid backing. And it, it works really well for me because I like to just run the glass cutter up along the edge of the ruler. To get started, I'm going to place my ruler slightly to the left of where I want my score line to be. This is because when you look at the area around the carbide wheel of the glass cutter, it's in the center of the tip and there's metal around it to keep it in place. You need to account for that little bit of metal so that your wheel lines up exactly where you want the score line to be. Place your ruler on the surface of your mirror and place your glass cutter at the very edge of it. You'll want to push down gently and glide or move the glass cutter across the surface of the mirror. You don't want to push down too hard, but you need to push hard enough for the tool to score. I like to push the glass cutter away from me, but you can pull it towards you if you'd rather score that way. It's really whatever's most comfortable for you. Getting it right does take practice, so I would recommend maybe buying a little bit cheaper mirror to practice with before you get started cutting for your real project. You want to listen for the lovely scoring sound. It, it's like music to your ears. Then once you've scored your mirror, you get your running pliers and center the line on the pliers to your score line that you just made and you gently squeeze the mirror. Sometimes you have to use the pliers on one end of the mirror and then turn the mirror piece around and use the pliers on the other end and keep going back and forth as the score line runs the full length of your mirror. This is especially true for longer and thinner, thicker strips of mirror. Remember, this isn't like a regular piece of stained glass where you cut the glass, you use the running pliers, and it breaks. This has a backing to it. Therefore, we have to be gentler and help the score line along in some cases in order to fully, cleanly break the piece. You only want to score your mirror once. Don't overscore or try to correct or rescore your line. If you didn't press down hard enough, then score and cut off that piece of mirror and start over cleanly with a new score line. The wider you cut a piece of mirror, the easier it is to break apart. The smaller your piece, the more difficult. You can cut wider strips down into smaller strips, and if you do need smaller strips, it's a good idea to cut a wider piece of glass, then cut down to a smaller strip. You'll have better luck with getting the thin strip to break cleanly. You can even cut strips down into squares or rectangles or triangles with the glass cutter or wheeled glass nippers. Or you can skip the strips altogether and just cut freeform shapes.
And that's how you cut mirror for mosaics. Question of the day. Let me know in the comments if you're planning to add mirror to your mosaics. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up as it really does help my channel and subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell notification so you never miss a single upload and let me know in the comments if there's something you'd like me to cover in a future video. I'll see you soon. Bye. Big ol' iguana out there. Right outside my window. Ah, it was going so good there. What am I trying to say? Now focus on me, focus on the little video. Bam, what? If you're looking for more mosaic inspiration, you can check out one of these two videos. Until then, see ya.